Welcome to the Postal Mate webinar, USPS Secret Rate Increase. My name is Karen Grant and I'll be your instructor today. We're going to start with a brief history of events that happened this last January. The PRC uh, is the US governing body that must approve rate and rule changes for the post office. And while the post office is financially independent, um, the PRC is very much a part of the US government. So the idea that they had was they were gonna remove the old balloon rating that was used and it was inefficient. They used it on priority mail zones one through four and all of parcel select ground. And they were going to introduce dimensional weight to those services and zones. And they were also going to include express mail on that. So they basically watched UPS and FedEx over the years make a bunch of money off of dimensional weight and thought, geez, we need to really get in on this and get up to speed. So they, they started making those movements. Now, the PRC has to do everything in steps. So the first thing they had to do was um, set a date for when they were going, the effect was gonna happen, which was January. I wanna say it was January 19th, but I could be wrong on that. It was the third, third Sunday in January, I think. And then uh, that was approved. And then they had to vote to basically to remove balloon rate. Well, that was approved. And then they had to vote to um, add dimensional weight. And that's where there was a hiccup. There was a government shutdown, if you remember. And that happened in the middle of all of this. So they removed the balloon rate, they approved the date of changes, but they didn't quite get the vote done and approval done on the introduction of the dimensional weight for these products. And that left the post office in a really tough spot. So, um, so basically the post office had to remove the balloon pricing and go to weight based and they couldn't do dimensional weight for those services because it had not yet been approved. That means that from January until last Sunday, people, Americans were making out like bandits by being able to ship or mail packages with no balloon rating and no dimensional weight for these services at a fraction of what it actually cost the post office. If you think the post office has operated in the red in the past, stay tuned for their next announcement on how much money they lost. It should be astronomical because I guarantee savvy large shippers, <clears throat> Amazon, um, knew about this and took advantage of it. So um, it's kind of like, well, it was pretty frightening and it's, it's going to be a big deal. So what happened? Well, dimensional weight was introduced. Now I'm going to change here and I want you to, to think back. You've seen this happen over the years with regular products and how, um, a company will have a, a product and they'll just reduce the amount but keep this price the same. Well, that's kind of what's happened with the post office. They, I don't want to say they pulled one over, but as soon as the PRE, PRC got back to work, they finished the process, they introduced dimensional weight, but they also introduced kind of a secret part. And it wasn't really secret, but it just wasn't talked about much. And that is uh, the rule change that happened on on December, or excuse, December, hello, June 23rd. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, and it wasn't just that dimensional weight was introduced. It, it was that dimensional rate weight ugh, was also changed. The formula had changed. And I've heard nobody in the world talking about the formula changing, just that dimensional weight was now applying to all these other things which is true, but they also changed the formula. So you'll remember last year that UPS and FedEx changed their dimensional weight formula. They changed the divisor. It had been 139 and they moved it to 166 for our stores. That was good because the higher the dimensional divisor, the lower the rate of shipping. So they did us a favor. They lowered our prices that way, which was a really cool thing they didn't have to do and they did. So we were all thrilled about that. Well, the post office did just the opposite. I know I'm shocking you when I say that, but 
they actually changed the divisor from 194, which was a really good number, down to 166, which for us matches UPS and, D and FedEx for shipping. Um, so that so what that means is on just regular, uh, let's say a package to zone seven priority mail that had been subject to dimensional weight previously. It was only zones one through four that had not. So it, you, so it's for zone seven, in fact, for zones five, six, seven, eight, and nine, this is an increase of between um, two and seven pounds per package, depending on the size of the package. So it, it can be quite substantial. It could be a 10 plus percent increase in the price, and that's kind of a big deal. So dimensional weight, and let me go back a screen because a lot of stores are not familiar with the formula or overly familiar because Postmate does it for you. And Postmate's gonna continue to do it for you, but you need to understand what is dimensional weight. And it's the length times the width times the height, and then divide that by the divisor, which is currently 166 for UPS, FedEx, uh, uh, post office and DHL. Then there's the billable weight and the billable weight is the larger of either the actual weight or the dimensional weight. So uh, for post office, this only is in effect if it's over one cubic foot. So post office does not use dimensional weight on one cubic foot or less, but it's, if it's over one cubic foot, they do. Again, postal mate's gonna do it for you. So basically what this is, means is that um, a small package is going to go at weight base and a larger package is going to go at dimensional weight. Same as, um, well, new for, new for post off, a lot of new, new post office services or new, new for a lot of post office services. This is how the one on the right side is how UPS and FedEx and DHL have been doing it for years. So the services this is going to affect are express mail, priority mail, and parcel select ground. Again, Postmate will do this for you. You just need to make sure that you have it all in there. Now, I want to I want to tell you that if you have not updated Postmate, I'm going to say it at least twice, maybe three times during this webinar. You need to up, update Postmate right away to 11.7.5. We've actually had some stores call in. In fact, I did a check this morning because we can we can see, we get a, a count of how many stores have updated and what versions they're on so we know if we're doing a good job in um, promoting our updates. As of this morning, very early this morning, one in six stores still had not updated. That means you're getting bad pricing for post office. Now, here's what happens with that. When you create a full label, um, we send only the raw data to Indicia. So we send where it's going, what services you asked for, the size, the weight, and that goes to Indicia and they calculate using their system how much postage should go on that. At the same time, Postalmate calculates how much postage should go on it and what your, your retail price would be. But that of course assumes you're up to date on Postalmate. We had two stores contact us yesterday. They just happened to notice that they charge the customer one price, but the, the label from Indicia charged them two or three times what they charged their customer for. They lost 10, 20, $30 on a single package because they had not updated. So I'm gonna show you um, why I titled the, this webinar in such a scary way. So these are a before and after screen, the same exact package. Now, I will admit this is an extreme example, but I selected it because it's one I actually shipped in my own stores years ago on occasion. And many of you will occasionally have this same thing where in my case, it was a lampshade, a large lampshade. And you have to put that in a big box because it's not like you can bend the lampshade, right? So this is a three pound item in a 20 cube box, very rare but it does happen. But I want you to see the cost, the A number in how much it went up. And if you had shipped this and didn't update, how bad this would financially hurt. This package last week would have cost you only $8.34 by priority mail. 
The same service, same package today would cost you $43.45. And that's why it is so important that you get updated. This was part of that di missing dimensional weight thing that didn't get approved in time last January and it was this big gaping hole because trust me, um, it cost the post office more than $8.34 to send this thing. So they were. this is one of those things where they were losing tons of money on. So, okay, this is an extreme example. Let's look at something a little bit more reasonable. Um, this is a 14 cube, five pound, and this one's more common, still lightweight and, and bigger, but it is more common. Even in this example, you can see that you might would only, uh, you would only, last week you would only pay $9.12, and this week for the same package, you would pay $20.35. And I am using the best available rates through Indicia on here if you want to ever compare. So the point is, of course, to get updated and don't lose money. And, um, I always find it amazing how many people don't enter dimensions. So you need to enter dimensions. And if you didn't know it, there is a setting in PostalMate that you can set that won't let you ship a package unless you have dimensions entered. And I know that can be a pain sometimes, but if you have employees or if you're not one to keep up perfectly with the rules, I'm going to really recommend that you um, have this selected so that dimensions are required. And I'll tell you where to get find this um, place to set this in just a little bit. Also, um, there was a change in the Global Advantage Program, and we call that GAP for short, G-A-P. And this feature is for stores that are on the Indicia Preferred Rates or RS Associates Postal Rates Program. Now I'm going to I'm going to offer you some unsolicited advice. This program may not be for you. Most of you that know me know that I'm all raw raw when it comes to anything that can make you money. But in this case, the cost of training may exceed the cost of savings involved. I very rarely say that. I usually will encourage you to go to almost extremes to make money and make every penny you can in your store. So when I'm telling you this, I'm telling you that this, this can be a real pain in the neck to learn and use. So let me tell you who it's for. If you have a great international community in your area that uses your store and you kind of specialize in international stuff, this is for you. If you have a lot of employees and they're not able to learn and memorize kind of difficult rules and when to use them and when to not and use good judgment, then this program is not for you. If you are a mom and pop and you're just running it yourself and you don't want to worry about the rules just to save a few dollars once or twice a year for many of you, then this is not for you. So having said that, let's go through real quickly what it is. And I'm not going to take a lot of time on this. I could, but if this is something that you really want to do, you really do need to read the update guide in po from PostalMate. And there's a link in that that will take you to the gap page provided by Indicia that will give you more information on this. And you need to study it in detail. But so that you all understand whether, whether or not it's something you should use, let's get into it briefly. So GAP is for international flats that contain goods up to 4.4 pounds. Now remember, a flat has to qualify as a flat by shape-based pricing. So it has to be uniform thickness, it has to be flexible, it has to have, you know, size and weight has to match. And so many goods, you have to try to think, well, what goods could I put in an envelope? It can't be bigger than three quarters inch thick that would be flexible and uniform thickness with no bumps. And there's just not a lot of things that would qualify. And the only one that comes to my mind frequently is x-rays, because if you've ever mailed x-rays, they're ridiculously heavy. They are flexible, they're uniform in shape, but I don't know how many x-rays you ship internationally. But you know, okay, let's say you did a bunch of them. Then that would qualify, it would be a really good thing for the GAP program. Now we have a lot of stores that that put things in the envelope that maybe don't quite qualify in uniform thickness or no bumps. 
This is where it's a really big gray area. Technically, you should not do that. I don't know that for GAP, it will be always rejected because it kind of goes through an indicia service um, as opposed to post office. Indicia becomes the consolidating broker for this and they're gonna let a lot of things slide through. So if you had, let's say you had a folded T-shirt and you put a slice of cardboard on top and a slice of cardboard underneath it and shoved it in an envelope, that would probably be flexible enough, like thin cardboard. I'm talking about, you know, car, uh, heavier than cardstock. What is it, a chipboard? Is that what it's called, I think? Um, so the flexible kind. Yeah, that like gift box. That would probably be okay as long as it was under three quarters inch thick. That would probably slide through. But guys, I don't want you looking at this program as a great way to escape the rules so that you can make an extra five bucks once or twice a year. If you do a bunch of international flats with goods every week, oh my gosh, this program's for you. The rest of us, eh, not so much. When you do use this program, um, it's going to print out a really funky label. Now, this is not changed. This We've had the GAP program for about a year, year and a half or so. And this label has printed out. And it looks a little different, you know, depending on how it goes. But it's similar to this. It may or may not have the address of the final recipient somewhere on the right-hand side. I've seen them with and I've seen them without. It does, however, it is, however, addressed to a U.S. domestic postal processing facility. And there's like five of them, they're regional. So I think there's one in New Jersey, there's one in California and you know, so on and so forth. So that kind of freaks out customers. So that's when we usually get a call into support. I just did this package to, you know, to Italy and it printed to New Jersey, what's going on? Well, that's one of these. And so um, you just need to be aware of it. The customs form also will not print. And so what happens is the item gets to the postal processing facility and they scan it and they actually, it actually includes when they scan it, they get the information that you input on the customs form and they create the customs form from there and the final label to Italy or wherever it's going. And they slap on that package, um, that information. They, we are told it does not increase the time in transit. I don't know how that works, but they, that's what we're told. It does not increase the time in transit when you use this. Um, I'm not sure I believe that 100%, but that's, again, what they say. Um, okay, and sorry, I'm trying to read some questions. That's why I'm umming in between. I apologize for that because I want to try to catch things. And uh, I need a little bit more detail from a couple of you. So if you want to add a little more detail on that, I'd appreciate it. So once this label prints out, you also need to know about pricing. So here's what you need. This is the big deal. This is not available at the post office and to the public. This is only available to those of you on the best rate programs with Indicia and PostalMate. So that right now is the Indicia Preferred or the RS Associates Postal Program. One of those two, either one or, or either one of them is fine, um, will give you this option. It's not available to the post office. I will tell you, I love things with, when you can do it and the post office can't. But because it's not available at the post office, you have the freedom of pricing this however you want to price it and not worrying about competing with the post office. As long as you price it under a first class package, which is what your customer would have to send it as if they walk to the post office or Priority Mail International, then you're going to be winning. So you have a lot of latitude. There is a surcharge for this. It's $4.70. You can mark it up. When we put added this new program into your Postmate with this update, we adopted your current margins that you have for your standard first class and applied it to this. That may or may not be appropriate for your store. Um, you would have to look and see if you want to increase it. I doubt any of you want to make it lower, but we wanted you to right off the bat have um, a, a markup in it. So we matched your current uh, first class margins and included that. It is a little bit weird in the way they do it. They don't do it by the ounce for GAP. 
Um, they do it by a grouping. So up to X ounces is this, and then this to 1.5 pounds is this, and 1.5 pounds to two pounds is this, and so on and so forth. So you will find some really strange things. So a two ounce package that has goods in it is really expensive, but a 15 ounce package with goods in it seems really cheap. So it's kind of weird. <clears throat> and we'll get more to that into that in just a moment. Uh, but so you're thinking about doing it or not doing it. Let me give you some helps. So first, if you want to turn it off, you can just turn it off. Blanket, turn it off. Right here, you can just uncheck Global Advantage Program in your Indicia settings, and then it won't appear in PostalMate at all, and you don't have to worry about it. If you have employees you don't want to train or are prone to making mistakes, that's where I'd go. But if you want to do it and you want to make sure that your employees use it only when it's appropriate, you can type in words in your time and transit area for post office, like I've encouraged you in the past, something to signal your employees or you for that matter, that it needs additional looking at. And so I've used the terms needs authorization so that your employees know, need, know to go to you to get approval for it if you want to have that or any other words you want to put there to trigger um, extra thought before this is selected. Must fit um, uh, shape base would be another good one to say. Um, those kinds of things. So I'm going to escape out of my PowerPoint for a moment. We're gonna go directly to Postmate and I wanna show you a couple of things um, in how this will appear on your screen. So this is a first class package, um, flat actually, let me, let me phrase that correctly. This is a first class flat to Italy, 14 ounces. And I have two options available to me, just a regular flat and one with the GAP program. GP stands for GAP. When I highlight this, you can see GP stands for GAP, okay? So the difference is this one is for documents. This one is for goods because the GAP program is only for goods, okay? So let me show you how that works out when we continue with the two processes. So if I choose the lesser expensive one and I go to my next screen, my only option is to choose documents, okay? I cannot choose goods. Let me go back. Yes, 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 we know. If I choose this one, which is the GAP program, and I go to the next screen, my option are documents or goods, okay? So you can do, you can do goods, your documents or goods. If you had a big pile of documents that were just heavy, you could do that. So hopefully that helps you to understand these two. Again, you can remove this one completely or you can type in words here like I did, needs authorization. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and pause and then we're gonna talk about net stamps, but I wanna stop and pause and take a few questions um, or at least look at a few questions regarding the GAP program. Um, what is the difference between Indicia Preferred and RS Rate Program? Zero. If you want to get on the RS rate program, contact RS. If you want to get on the Indicia Preferred program, contact Indicia. No difference at all. Um, I always say RS has a lot of other benefits, so you might want to take a look at that. But <clears throat> this isn't an RS advertisement right now. I don't want to get my backside hit. Um, if, the, if the package has insufficient postage, what will the post office do? Well, that would be really weird as long as you entered everything correctly, but it should come back to you if it's international. Um, carrier logos on the screen. Susan, I'm not sure what we're talking about there. So upgraded over the weekend and okay, that's completely off topic. Okay, when measuring for USPS, do we need to measure to the quarter inch or just the full inch? Okay, this is an area where there's a lot of confusion. The rule of measuring to the quarter inch is for cubic rate pricing, which is a domestic feature only, 
and that's the only time you're required to measure to the quarter, uh, quarter inch. For all other USPS shipping, mailing, um, you should measure the actual item and enter that. Now, I want to, this is a little known thing you may not have ever realized, but Postal Mate will not for letters and flats, first class letters and first class flats, domestic or international, Postal Mate will not stop you from mailing it based on the dimensions. And that's because the dimensions are part of the shape-based characteristics of a shipment and you have to have the shape-based feature. All of those characteristics have to match. So if I suddenly put one inch in here, Postal Mate would still let you mail it as a flat even though it's over three quarters of an inch. And the reason for that is because Postal Mate will round up to the next full inch on these items. So if it says, even, even if it says 0.50, Postal Mate will round it up to one inch. It will not reject it. I'm just letting you know it's going to let it go. So I still want you to enter correct dimensions because it's really good behavior to do. But I want you to know that when you're sending a first class letter or a first class flat, you have to follow the shape-based criteria or characteristics designed by the post office. And if you ever wonder what those are, you'll notice down here a little blue eye. And you can click on that and it's going to tell you. So when you're teaching new employees, this is kind of the base guidelines. There's more information available, which takes you to the DMM and gets in the de into the details. But we've listed the characteristics that are absolutely the most common um, that you will need to know while you're mailing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint real quickly, and then we'll address net stamps, which I know that you all want to know about. And I apologize. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh, so some of the things I've taught you how to do today, like require dimensions, uh, remove the gap or add words to the gap are included on our cheat sheet that you can click on your webinar pane uh, under the handouts. I've also included the 11.7.5 update guide so that you can read pages three and four on the changes with the GAP program. So I encourage you to do that. If you're watching this as a recording, just email support at pcsynergy.com, but be sure and ask for the right cheat sheet because they have about 30 of them and they don't know which one you want if you're not specific. So make sure that you're very, very specific. And let's talk about net stamps. So let me give you a little bit of history um, in case some of you are new. Indicia announced that they are going to be changing your stamp label stock that you use for the Dymo printer to print out stamps. And currently you purchase a label stock that has two pink sides in kind of an L, upside down L shape. Um, that's changing to the ones that you see on the screen over to the right. And it has a pink on the top and a pink on the bottom. Currently, those are only available through um, stamps.com, net stamps, basically. There are currently no knockoffs on this. And the question is often, often comes up is, will there be knockoffs on this? My gut says no. They are designed in a way to avoid knockoffs, um, to prohibit knockoffs. Time will tell. There's very clever people in the world, so it's possible. But it's also po possible that using knockoffs will become illegal. So this backs up to why did they do this? Well, they did this because people were um, creating stamps through um, hacking, basically, and and so or copying, and so. Dymo in, in conjunction with stamps, in conjunction with the post office, came up with a way where you're going to use different labels. And basically, you get the roll of labels, and the label has a little scan code on it. And you have to enter that scan code into the software, and Postmate will, will support this. And the scan code tells the software, okay, this is a roll of 200 labels. At, after it's printed 200 stamps, it stops and you're going to be required to enter a new code in in order to 
print more stamps. And those coded, those codes, obviously, they can lock those down so that generics can't, can't work. Um, so that's the plan. I don't know if that's in reality how it's going to work, but that was the plan. <laughs> so what we have been told is that this program is going to be uh, introduced beginning in July of 2019. However, you don't have to buy new stamp labels until sometime in early 2020. And that date is subject to change. We don't have an exact date yet and it's subject to change, but we've been told early 2020 at this point. So you can continue to use your current la uh, stamp label stock. There will be no change in the printer. So your current printers are gonna work um, in, until they die, as far as we know. And when we get information about the stamp label stock changing, we will let you know and give you as much advance warning as we can. Indicia should be giving you advance warning too, but I hear they're not so good at that. When they do change again, it's gonna look like the ones on the lower right. Meanwhile, there will be software changes that occur with Indicia or stamps.com. And um, remember, stamps.com purchased Indicia company a couple of years ago. They've been in the process of merging their businesses together. And in doing so, as you can imagine, they have a lot of duplicate software. So the process of that, they're actually going to stop having duplicate software. So Stamps had kind of a full label service and Indicia had a full label service and we used the Indicia one. Stamps had a postage printing service and Indicia had a postage printing service. So for those of you that happen to also use the independent uh, po uh, printable postage software that's provided by Indicia outside of Postmate, so independent of Postmate, they are going to um, kill that software. Won't affect our Postmate users at all. I mean, it won't affect Postmate, We're, we will be fine, but we do have a handful of stores that use that software independently of, po of Postmate because they do some kind of unique things in that. So they are gonna kill off that particular software sometime. I don't have a date on that because it doesn't concern Postmate. Postmate's gonna continue to function just the same as it always has, through until the 2020 stamp change, with one exception. We will at some point see the software that Indicia has, so that's called the Indicia API, make a change to your stamps. Your stamps are gonna look a little different. They're gonna start printing out sideways. And that's no big deal. You just turn it on this, on the, on this, the, before you put it on the envelope, of course. But believe me, the first few times it happens, you or your employees are going to freak out because it's different, right? So just know we don't have a date for that. We may not even be told when that will happen. We probably will just get calls from stores going, my Dymo printer is freaking out. Well, that's an expected software change, and that's part of the process for them ramping up for this new label. So it will print out sideways and it's perfectly fine and you'll be able to use your stamps as always. So again, early 2020 will be the change. You're gonna be able to keep your same Dymo printer. Your current stock of labels, you can continue to use those. If you're running low, you can order a modest supply of those. I don't want you to go crazy so that you have a bunch left over, but you'll be able to continue to use those until at least early 2020. Um, the stamp label will, will uh, change at that time. Um, in early 2020 to the two pink strips on uh, top and bottom. Doesn't look like there's gonna be generic, so let's talk about the cost. The new labels are kind of expensive, guys, and I'm hoping that price is gonna come down, but I know that when you're buying, if you buy, happen to buy knockoffs, you're getting the knockoffs for probably anywhere from a penny to less than a penny per label stamp. The new ones, the best price I have seen is seven cents per label. So that would be seven cents per stamp. Yeah, I, <laughs> you guys are all freaking out. That's that's if you buy the largest quantity that I've seen available. Now, as they print these, I would assume that the, the cost of printing will come down. So will in, in um, stamps.com pass that savings along to you? I don't know the answer to that. Um, so I would say that would be a conversation you'd want to have with stamps.com slash Indicia. Um, we don't have any input on that. If it was up to me, I would give it to you for free as part of the costs that they should incur for having you as a customer, but they won't listen to me. 
So, and then of course the direction will change. So, um, now you can always use the full four by six label if you want for postage. But bear in mind, if you have to turn that sideways on an envelope, then you have to also charge a non-machinable surcharge. So totally up to you. So let's see where we are. Oh my gosh, it's question and answer time. So I know I have um, covered a lot of issues. I know that the GAP program is somewhat confusing. I'll try my best to answer questions. Some of these questions might be better answered one-on-one. -on -one. And some of you have questions I've seen come through that are off topic completely. So I wanted to first start with questions that are topic specific. So if it's something that I mentioned in the webinar, please go ahead and ask those questions now. And if you have a question about something unrelated, then we'll get to that after um, we in, you know, get through the first questions. So, is net stamps in replace of a meter? That's a good question. I'm not familiar with net stamps. Net stamps is in um, is basically the new printable postage that stamps.com has. So you can get more information by going to netstamps.com. It is owned by uh, stamps.com. And um, I certainly will, Helene. Um, so that's where you want to go. I'm going to go backwards here for a minute, guys. I was asked to show this screen, but it's also in the handout is so if you um, that I have that you can download. So if you click on the handout for um, the cheat sheet, it'll print out and it has directions to get to both of these places. And let's see. What would happen if we don't put the dimensions on envelopes and postmate? Nothing. It would ship. Um, you just need to be very, very careful about making sure that all the characteristics are met and in compliance with the shape-based rules of the post office. Um, okay. I'm sorry. There's With 500 of you, well, there's over 300 of you logged in. I, it's a little bit hard getting through the question, look of the questions. So, um, Time to look for a new stamp option. Well, there are not a lot of stamp options. Um, this is still probably better overall than a meter. Um, but yeah, it's. I hope the price comes down too, guys. And again, the difference between net stamps and the stamps that print through Indicia, they are one and the same company. Um, again, they're merging software. So this is um, gonna, be be what we're dealing with. Uh, question is, if I print a bunch of one ounce postage on my leftover Dymo printers, will printers the labels will the post office still accept them? Um, po once postage is printed uh, on a on a Dymo stamp, it is always accepted. Now it would be like an old fashioned stamp in that it's a it's sensitive to the price on it. And if stamps in the future increase, you'd have to have, an, you know, use that as an increase. It'd be like an old, you know, an old 49 cent stamp, if you will. So yes, the answer is yes. But guys, I, I, a lot of you have purchased your store in the last two, three, four, five, six years. I need to share with you how we did it in the olden days, if you will. We were cheapskates in the olden days. <laughs> And what I mean by that was I would never have printed a stamp or a meter strip for a one ounce stamp ever, ever, ever in my store. For that purpose, I had an, a broken roll, an opened roll of first class stamps and they're forever stamps now. So that's what I would use in a drawer. And anytime a customer, I sold a one ounce anything, I would put a regular forever stamp on that item. I can't imagine why anybody would be printed. We got we got lazy because it became cost efficient or not cost efficient, but it, it kind of wasn't as expensive. It's kind of like using paper plates instead of washing your plates. It, it, the cost of paper plates have come down so much that sometimes we use those instead of washing real plates. Well, that's kind of what happened with stamps because the cost of printing your stamps came down so low, even though it was still more expensive than using a forever stamp, we often did it but it was a bad habit. Um, and 
if I, with these changes, I would go back to the old way in a heartbeat and I would just have a broken roll and be the cheapskate and my customer would pay me the 55 cents or 60 cents or 65, whatever they paid me. And I would set the, the envelope to the side or put a little one on it or a little check mark on it to indicate that it just needed one, one ounce stamp. And then when the customer was gone, I'd take my roll out and get my forever stamp and plop it on that and put it in my mail, outgoing mail. Um, that's just, you know, so I've got some, a few of responding to me, responding, that's what we do, the old fashioned way and cheap. So, <laughs> and so I encourage you to go back. Sometimes the old way was the right way. <laughs> Usually the new way is, but in this case, I think the old way was the right way. So, um, and by the way, you can order stamps from the post office to be delivered to you. A lot of you say, well, I can't get to the post office to buy stamps, blah, blah, blah. You can order stamps from the post office to be mailed to you. And if you order over a certain dollar amount, they will um, send it certified mail. I think it costs still $1 to have stamps. I used to order, um, I don't know, 20 books and 10 rolls or 50 books, 50 books and 10 rolls. That's what I would order weekly and have that delivered to my store. Um, and I would just get it in the mail once a week and have to sign for it. And it was great. Never had to go into a post office. So yes. And I also used Costco because I am also cheap. And co if you're a Costco member, they give, um, oh gosh, I can't remember how much off. It's not much, but at Christmas time, if you're buying a lot, it add, does add up a little bit. And I'm at Costco anyway. It's an excuse to go to Costco, right? Okay. A quarter less. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna to get to other questions now and I'm gonna move back to my Q&A. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna let you look at another slide about our regional trainings. So our training team consists of five wonderful people, well, four wonderful people and me. And we usually have at least three of them at any event. And in fact, at the RS Expo coming up, we will have all five of us at this event. But, um, and it can, we rotate, so I don't end, attend all of the um, regionals, but most of them I do. So we've got three left this year, but the, uh, the August event at the RS Expo, we are currently planning, and this could change, but right around 20 classes on Postal Mate. And we do start a day early so we can have kind of a full day of instruction. I want to say it's on Wednesday we start. I know that's a work day and all that, but gosh, if you're going anyway, or if you're in the area, what a great time to get a ton of training or, for, or to rotate your staff and have them get some training. So we want you to take advantage of that. Um, uh, yeah, okay. And let's see. Any other, I don't have any questions or else I'm just not scrolling good. So give me some questions, guys. Oh, it's I'm not scrolling. Yeah, that figures. Um, yes, this is recorded. Yes, it will be available. Um, more questions. Give me more questions. The cheat sheet document does not have the warning on how to add, oops, have the instructions on how to add the warning. Wait, really? Yes, it does, right in the middle. So, and... Would I, and so, yes, I will go ahead and show these really quickly. Why don't I go ahead and show them? So if you want to make these changes, let's do step by step. Dimensions first, because that's the most important, regardless of whether you use GAP or not. So to require dimensions, you're going to go to Tools, Postmate Settings, right in the middle, Shipping Settings. Go to the Other tab, and it's right here, Require Dimensions for All Services or require dimensions for services with dim rating. Those are the ones I want you to, either one of those, either one, I don't care. Just don't have it on the first one. I, get, I wanna cry when I get to stores that have it on do not require for dimensions. In fact, I wanna to talk to our development team into removing that option completely. One day I will get my way and I'll have somebody whining over it. So then just click the green save button. That's all there is to it. So the next one is how do you turn off gap? Okay, again, tools, post -to mate settings, carrier setup, USPS, down in the lower left, Indicia settings, and then the options tab, and it's right here, Global Advantage Program. You would just uncheck that and click OK. Okay, 
Last is how do you get those fancy words on the screen and in place of the time in transit? And that can only be done for post office services, but you could do it for all your post office services. And if you ever look, in fact, let me go real quickly. I'm just going to do a package real quick so you can see um, kind of what I do. I'll do three ounces. Uh, I'm going to do a domestic package so you can kind of see under post office. And I have all kinds of words here to help me out. Last to load, I really want to discourage parcel select ground, media mail, educational only to remind me, first class flat, um, must fit size restrictions, that's to remind me about that, um, the shape based rules. And remember, when I highlight this, what happened over here, the blue eye lit up. And there it is, the instructions on, for sh on the shape based. So um, make sure when I, when I click on something like this, that blue eye goes away because, well, that's priority mail. But when I click on something over here that is subject to shape base, then that blue eye is lit. Bet a bunch of you didn't know that was there. And then, so how do you get these words on and what words would you choose? Well, if you want to take a screenshot of that or get your cell phone out and take a picture of this to get some ideas, do that. I'll count to five, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now I'm going to cancel and we're going to go and show you how to add those words. And it's long instructions and that's why I put it in the cheat sheet because I don't expect you to write this down or remember, remember it. Edit, shipping carrier, scroll down until you find United States Postal Service, edit, and then you pick your service here and the last one happens to be the new gap one. And then click edit and then the display tab. And right here is where you can enter whatever you want. And over here it shows what it would look like on the screen. So right here, and this is type of, now it's, it is character limiting. So it won't, don't exceed the distance here. Um, it's not going to let you go and add a gazillion uh, characters. So uh, make sure that you do um, limit how much words you put in there, or how many letters. Um, let's see. Um, this one is Jennifer. I spoke to FedEx on Monday and they told me their dimensional divisor, weight divisor is at 139 instead of 166. So we have been losing money on FedEx packages. Is there a way we can fix this in PostalMate? Jennifer, your dimensional divisor is 166, not 139. Every other account holder at FedEx has 139. But as an FASC, one of the perks you get is a dimensional divisor of 166 and the retail rate program, not the list rate program offered by FedEx. So the person you talked to did not look at your account specifically if you are an FASC. If you are not an FASC, then Postalmate will give you the wrong rates because Postalmate is designed and has to be certified by FedEx and UPS for that matter, uh, and DHL for that matter, uh, to work with their certified programs. Okay, um, and I'm sorry, it is a little bit hard to get through all the questions and, and make sure that I'm reading them correctly and understanding them correctly. Uh, I mentioned something about cubic rates being to the quarter inch. Yes, if you're going to send something by cubic rate, which is completely off topic and not something we addressed today, but if you're going to send something by cubic rate, you do need to, mention, to enter it by the nearest quarter inch in PostalMate. Um, an easy way to do that when you're on the dimension screen is hit this little fractions button and then you could enter uh, 12 and a quarter by uh, eight and three quarters and see how that will just do that for you. And that way you don't have to figure out decimals or anything. Uh, okay, thank you, Dan. All right. Do we have to put dimensions in for every flat in USPS? My question to you is why would you not? Why would you ever get in the habit of not entering dimensions every single time? And if you if you want to stand there and tell me because it takes extra time, then I, I might come to your store and pull the rug out from under you because folks, to enter dimensions every single time is really a quick thing. And it's, it's really best practice to enter 12, 10, 5. It took that much time. 
It's not hard. Just get in the habit of doing it. Is it always going to be used and needed in every circumstance? No, it's not. But the minute you don't enter dimensions will be the one time it's required and you needed it and didn't know. Or, heaven forbid, you have an employee that's looking over your shoulder and watching what you're doing and then follows your example and ends up costing you money. It's just not worth it. Oh, yeah. And is there, a, a, this is again off topic, so um, I'm going to go ahead and include, and include these questions in the Q&A, but if you're watching this as a recording, I think we're done with the questions regarding this webinar, and we're just going to some off topics. So if you want to stay on them and listen to it, that's fine. So the question was, is there a problem with DHL pricing? I shipped a box to Spain this morning and the customer cost was 440 and um, my A was 580 something. I don't know of any issues with DHL pricing. However, having said that, um, the DHL rate change that happened recently, if you had not done a quick rate setting utility in January at the time after the, the rate change, and then you change tiers or something uh, um, recently, yeah, there could be some really strange things happen that happen in your software. So let me explain to you what I would do to make sure that your DHL pricing is correct after the new tier. So if you're on the new tier, which is a tier four, and there's a couple of ways you can get that. One is to be, the main way is to um, be an RS Premium member with RS Associates. Um, you would go in here, I would recommend doing this. Go into Tools, Postalmate Settings, Carrier Setup, and for DHL, go to the dollar sign here where you select your tier, and just for kicks, go in here and click Tier Level 2, and click Apply and Save. Okay, once it's done that, go in here, go back and select Tier 4, and click Apply and Save that resets all of your tier level prices to match the correct rate from, from uh, DHL. So if you have any questions, do that and then check your rates. And if you still have a rate question or issue, contact support. As most of you know, um, I hang out with support for a good 30 to 45 minutes after webinars just to help catch any questions that come through that need my attention. Perhaps I didn't speak well enough or didn't understand the question when I was um, going through the webinar and I need to address it on a more personal level. So um, I would be happy to help you out with that. Oh, okay. So let me, I'm going to read this question <laughs> and try to answer it. You mentioned that we can use our existing DIMO labels until early 2020. True. Um, but I also said that the outside Indicia software will be discontinued. True. Does that mean the only way we can continue to existing to use the existing DIMO labels is to print them to print them from Postalmate through the Quick Posture screen? I don't know because I don't know when Indicia is killing their own program. So I don't know if that's happening in July, in September, or in January. I have no idea. But once they kill their internal program, I don't know if there's any other way you could use them other than through uh, Postal Mates Quick Postage. So that would be an, uh, an answer you'd have to get from Indicia on when they're going to kill their own uh, printable postage program. Then, um, Okay, I think I got that answered as best I can. And by, by the way, guys, if those of you that know me, I, I have this need to tell the right answer. It's not that I have the need to be right. I have the need to tell the right answer. So if I don't know, I'm going to tell you. I don't know. Um, do, how do I know what my FedEx tier level is? Great question, Jean. On our website, there is a short video that will explain to you, hold your hand and explain to you how to find your uh, FedEx tier level. There's also one for checking your UPS tier level. I highly recommend you go and watch that and it will walk you through to find your answer. All right, I think um, I think I've gotten most of the questions answered relating this to this. I hope so. If I did not, Guys, please email your questions in to support at pcsynergy.com. Do it as quickly as you can. Like I said, 
I'll be uh, hanging around support for the next 30 to 45 minutes and I'll try to answer any questions that come in um, regarding the webinar, even if it's kind of off topic. If I can answer it, I will. If I can't, I'll tell you, I don't know. It's the best I can do for you. Sometimes that's the best answer. So I wanna thank you all for joining me today. I hope you have a great week. Um, we will be having um, a new owners webinar in a couple of weeks. We'll have a, a um, I'll have a break for the 4th of July week. So have a wonderful 4th of July. And then we're also going, planning on a special webinar in July on how to price your DHL just a hair below or a hair above the DHL.com website so that you can make the most of your international community. We're going to get into some detail pricing with that because we, we really see a need for making as much money as we can. I'm seeing way too many people give too many discounts on DHL or overcharging on DHL. And there's a fine place that you can be if you want to be competitive, just a dollar or two or so under DHL.com so you can say I can beat DHL.com prices but yet you still make a humongous amount of money so I'm going to teach you how to do that um, and more so look out for that I appreciate you all take care and have a great week thank you and bye-bye